Again, we're grateful once again to be another Tuesday night to learn of thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so we come based on the inclination of growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and forever. Again, as we always begin with our prayer list, we want to remember Sister uh, McCulley, Imogene McCulley and her uh, husband, Brother Curtis Ray uh, McCulley. I uh, want to remember Sister Josephine McKinley, Sister Pat Mitchell. I always want to remember Sister uh, Haley Armstrong, which is the, the daughter of Sister Mel Armstrong, who just recently passed. Uh, we want to also remember those victims of uh, Uvalde, Texas. Uh, they're going through their seasons of uh, melancholy and trying to understand why. Uh, we want to pray for, matter of fact, the entire uh, United States because there's a demonic spirit that's reigning uh, with all of these shootings and all these killings that are going on. And we have to understand that we have to equate things that whenever we go away from God, things always uh, go, go south. And my dears, let us understand that we have to understand until we go back to God that the inevitable things that God has said will come knocking on our door. These diseases, all these killings and all this type of stuff. Have you ever thought about people really returning to the Lord? when he says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, God is still in the healing business. He will heal the land. God still has control over diseases. And so if we would just return unto the Lord, the remedy is not different shots and different serums and, and all that type of stuff. No, it's God. God is still in control. And if we would turn back to God, we'd be surprised at changes that God would be able to make, not only in our land, but even personally, even in our lives. If we would just give ourselves wholly unto the Lord. And so let us speak just a word of prayer. God, our Father, how we thank you right now. We continue to pray for those that are experiencing medical conditions right now. We pray for all of those who are under doctor's care knowing that you are still a doctor above all doctors. Still, there's more medicine in your government than there is in the drugstore in town. And so, God, while we're going through these seasons, we pray that I would just give them strength to hold on and trust God, even in the midst of our calamities, that God is able to keep us and hold us and strengthen us to endure. No wonder the word says he will not put no more on us than we can bear. And then, God, those who experienced the tragedies in Uvalde, Texas, we pray for mental illness. We pray many times it's not mental illness, many times it's just that we are sensing. We've turned away from God. And when we turned away from God, not only will the nation be destroyed, we will even destroy ourselves. Nobody can keep us. But God, he is our refuge and our present help in the time of trouble. We will lift up our eyes unto the hills from which cometh our help. And God, nobody can do it but you. We trust you as our healer. We trust you as our divine protector. We trust you as our providential provider. And God, it doesn't matter. We hear the echoes of what, what gas is and how, how gas is going up and how people won't be able to afford to electric car. But I hear you saying our focus is not on the world. Our focus is in God. The word specifically says no time to panic, but it's really time to continue praise because you said my God shall supply all of our needs according to the riches and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight we begin a series on Christian growth and development, uh, which is found in Hebrew uh, chapter 12, verses 5 through 11. 
But the background scripture for uh, uh, Christian growth and development is found in John chapter 3, where he gives a discourse with Nicodemus. And he says that Nicodemus, he came to Nicodemus by night. And Nicodemus had the question about how could you uh, be born again unless you go back into your mother's womb the second time. And Jesus says to him in verse 5, Verily I say unto you, Except a man be born again, born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. For that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I say unto you, that you must be born again. In the book of Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 12, verses uh, 1 through 12, verses 5 through 11. It reads thusly, Hebrew 12, verses 5 through 11. And ye have spoken of the exhortation in relationship. My son, despise not the chasing of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourge every son whom he received. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with his son. For what son is he whom the father chaseth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all the partakers, and we are bastards and not sons, Furthermore, we have fathers of our flesh which correct us, and we give them reverence. Shall we not rather be subject unto the Father of the Spirit and life? For verily for a few days, chasing after us our own pleasures, but, but he for our profit that we must be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seem to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised by it. Wherefore, lift up your hands which hang down and the fever knees. Make the pathway straight for your feet lest there is a lane to be turned out of the way. Lest it be healed. I did when well, we deal with Christian growth and development and being born again, there's a difference between personalities joining church and personality accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, of uh, which we say that's the point of salvation. For the Bible said that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, that thou shalt be saved. With the heart man believe unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is unto salvation. But my dears, there are three things that deals with in relationship to Christian growth and development. The first thing is, you cannot grow if you hadn't been born. And so there are three things that happen, number one, when you're born again. The first thing is, is that there is forgiveness. Our sins are forgiven when we're born again. When we receive Christ, he forgives our sins, our past, our present, and our future. And sins have earthly consequences. We have to understand that even though David, when he had um, had Uriah killed and he had a son, then we have to understand that there were some consequences for David's sin. The son died, and when David's son died, he got up and washed his face because he realized we cannot just sin and not have consequences. But it's not the point of having be, be tuned in about the consequences, but what's most important is that we tune in in forgiveness. A question was asked tonight uh, by a young lady, a friend of mine, who used to attend Little Union Missionary Baptist Church in Houston, Texas, 
she asks, how can you forgive somebody? What, what is the problem when you can't forgive somebody? I said, well, forgiveness is a choice. You decide whether you're going to forgive them or not. Even though you may forgive someone, the pain may still be there. The scars still be there. But yet and still, you don't have that that retaliation spirit that you want to get back at them and do something with them. The pain is still there, but it's only just a scar. And the scar will remind you many times of what happened. I never shall forget being stabbed at the Thorn Thistle um, Club in Oakland, California. That was owned by the Oakland Raiders guard, Eugene Upshaw. Uh, but my dear, now when I look at my knee, the scar is still there. And the scar reminds me of what happened that particular night. But that's been that been in so many years, it does not resonate. The fight and the animosity and the anger that rose up during that particular time. And so it's forgiveness is a matter of choice. God choose to forgive us. Matter of fact, we don't have to do anything that God to forgive us. The Bible says, even when we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He didn't wait till we was lovable. He loved us when even we were unlovable. But we have to understand that sin does have its consequences. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Many times we don't feel like the wages of sin is dead because we do things that's contrary to the will of God and we think there are no consequences, but, but there are consequences. Because God is long-suffering does not mean that we don't have consequences. There was a young man laying in the bed, uh, and he had sclerosis of the liver, and he only had a few months to live. And he was asking, why would God do that to him? He had not given his life to, to Jesus. And I said to him, well, maybe you've just given your life to Jesus, but think of the consequences before you came to Jesus. Think of all the strong liquor that you used to drink that put you in the position that you're in. God did not cause you to drink. He did not open the bottle. He did not pour it down your throat. And my dear, the things that you've done, we have to understand whatever we go contrary against the will of God and the inevitable come knocking on our door. We cannot blame God because there are consequences for our sins. And not only there are consequences for our sins, then we also have to understand that when we, when we sin and have been forgiven, that will also be, that be, it will influence our eternal rewards. Sin will also influence our eternal rewards. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5 and, 5 and 10. In the book 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, uh, we will find that it reads thusly. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. So my dears, we have to understand we just can't do what we want to do and then there are some consequences. The Bible says that that awful day will surely come when we have to stand before God and we have to give account of the deeds that's been done in our body. You have to understand that the eyes of the Lord are in every place. And so whatever we've done, we may, be, we may get by here on earth, but we won't get away when we stand before God because God has an all seen eye. And he's recording everything that's been done according to our bodies. And so there won't be no secret order like, like the Eastern Stars and no secret order like the Masons and all. No, everything will be bought for. And we shall give account of whatever we've done in our bodies. I never shall forget there was a young lady who worked uh, at the nursing home and she got so frustrated and they wonder why why did she quit? And when she quit, the only thing that she was worried about 
will she get the same treatment when she get old? My dears, you have to understand that there's a, a proverb that said, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So we have to be careful how we treat one another. We have to be careful about the deeds that are done in our body. My mother told me that whatever happened to me in ministry, she was so glad it wouldn't be her fault because she never went against a pastor. She never did things out the way. She never fought the ministry or anything like that. So whatever come upon me would not be her fault because she never done anything to have that thing done to her. And so he said, whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Isn't that a blessing that even in ministry, I don't have to worry about things that come up on me that they were done by my mother because she was so indignant and she would fight the ministry and she would fight the man of God. We have to be careful. We don't never know who's coming up the pipeline. We don't never know who the next pastor is going to be. And we have to understand that the way we treated other people will sooner or later come knocking on our doors. And so we have to understand that our influence of our eternal reward, we're going to have to give account of the deeds that has been done in our bodies. And then not only that, but we have to know that once we are forgiven, the greatest thing about getting forgiven, that they would not keep us out of heaven. Forgiveness is that atonement that God died on the cross that not only we will have life, but we will have eternal life, that we will reign and live everlasting with him. Let's look at Romans 5, verses 20 and 21. Romans 5, 20 and 21. Moreover, the law entered that he offense may abound. But where sin abound, grace did much more abound. That a sin hath reigned unto death, even so may grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In other words, when it deals with sin, uh, I know many times people used to, in the Old Testament dispensation, it was an atonement where they bought turtle doves and where they bought different animals, and these animals were sacrificed with the sacrificial atonement for the blood of their sins. But we don't have to bring anything to God because God has done everything already when he died on Calvary when he shed his blood. The songwriter says, what could wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And we have redemption through the blood of Jesus. I want to share one more scripture with you tonight. And that's in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 uh, and verse 7. We're just introducing tonight being born again. And we will continue this series in the incoming weeks about Christian growth and development. But one thing I say that's real prevalent, you can't grow without first being born. And we have to first be born again to be able to grow. The last thing is, is that Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, and listen what it says about redemption through the blood. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In other words, mercy, uh, justice give us what we deserve. Mercy, mercy keep us from getting what we deserve. And then grace make us abound. And by grace, we are inevitable that we don't get what we so rightfully deserve. God bestows upon us, he says, we have been redeemed through the blood of the land. And where there is sin, there is grace. That God forgive sin.
John 3, 16. For God, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It pricked my heart that many times, as the young lady said today, that there are many times it's not that God have not forgiven us, is that we have not forgiven ourselves. When we are born again, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become brand new. Three things happen. Number one, God forgives our sin, our past, our present, and our future. Don't fall under the auspices of Satan. It is amazing that many times when you come to worship God, and maybe you've done something on Monday that was against the will of God, and it's Sunday morning, and just when you get ready to praise God, Satan will remind me maybe what you did on Monday. But what Satan don't understand, there is forgiveness on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday forgiveness and Thursday forgiveness and Friday forgiveness and Saturday forgiveness and Sunday forgiveness. And so it's not a matter of fact have God forgiven you if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you have forgiven yourself. Everybody may know what you've done, but it's not what everybody knows. It's what Christ done on your behalf. For shedding his blood he became the atonement of your sin and done for you what you could not do yourself and he paid the price. We'll see you on next Tuesday night when we talked about the Christian conduct once we've been born again and what our new life in Christ ought to epitomize. We'll see you on next Tuesday night. Thank you for listening.